Hello and welcome to another episode of the Classical Republican. Today I'm talking about uh, homesteading, the Homestead Act in 18, from 1862, um, but also other similar efforts, um, well, close to home here in Twin Falls, Idaho. Um, so the Homestead Act, this is from the uh, Archives, National Archives website. It says it was passed on May 20th, 1862, it accelerated the settlement of Western Territory by granting adult heads of families 160 acres of surveyed public land for a minimal filing fee and five years of conti continuous residence on that land. Okay, so that, that was the law, uh, 1862. Uh, there were other efforts uh, before and after after to um, to uh, to get people land. So I mean, there are different ways to look at it. A lot of times, historians say, "Oh, it was all about settling the West." Uh, but um, I think more accurately at the time, and the way the way uh, the way the Republican Party, which really promoted this, was um, was, and, and you have to look at this in relation to labor. Uh, to how they thought about labor. And so la um, when we talk, talk about workers and uh, industrialization and work in factories and um, those type of, of uh, industrial laborers, um, you know, they're thinking that, you know, those, those are really good. And of course, we see in the union the uh, expansion of industrialization uh, for, for a number of reasons. But, you know, these, the, um, you know, the northern states, what become the northern states in, uh, during, um, uh, during the Civil War, all right, they're heavily Republican, and they believe in free labor as opposed to slave labor, and that they work to promote that. And so the, um, but, but the, we have to remember how they, how they look at the, the um, how they look at labor. And the way they look at labor is, uh, really a means to get somewhere else to get to, to be able to buy land sure you're going to work for wages and that needs to be a living wage but also a wage uh where you can be um where you can be able to save some of that money for land and so land was the ultimate means of production um at that time even though the united states uh, especially the nor northern states are becoming uh, more industrialized. And so, uh, let me read you some, uh, some uh, quotes here from um, some Republican platforms. Um, first in uh, 1860, and it says about, uh, about uh, homesteading, getting 160 acres, that it says that they are against any view of the free homestead policy uh, which regards the settlers as paupers or suppliants for public uh, for the public bounty. So they're saying this isn't a welfare program. Uh, you know, this is what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be, um, you know, these these people are supposed to be going and, and getting their land so they could live off of it. Um, you know, this isn't a, a welfare program. It's, it's what the country should be doing, what the, the state, what the government should be doing uh, to ensure the um the independence of their citizens and so in 1862 uh, there is still some semblance even though it is uh, this idea is falling away that the that citizens of a republic need to own land um there are still um and, and that's part, part of the reason uh they're doing this um there are people like thaddeus stevens who believe that uh that yeah you you um you know they need to give citizenship to the um to the former to to the former slaves but they need to uh also own land um so they can have their uh, economic independence so they are not dominated by their their bosses or whoever their their economic masters become um also, in 1876, uh, in the uh, party platform, it talks about uh, how public land uh, should be given for free homes and not to corporations or monopolies. So it's saying that individuals, um, you know, this land is set aside for, for individuals to have their homes and to be independent um, citizens. 
uh, rather than going to, uh, you know, big business. So, that's the view in the late 19th century. Um, in the early 20th century, and I'll be reading from In the Middle and on the Edge, tw the Twin Falls region of Idaho. It's by uh, my friend Jim Gentry, and uh, Dr. Jim Gentry, and he, um, he writes on page 156, um, oh, let me give you more background. So, um, so Twin Falls was created, um, through, um, through a, a canal system, through, um, irrigation. You know, we could, we could probably only have, uh, maybe a few hundred people living here, uh, mostly, you know, tending to sheep or cattle. Uh, we couldn't really support large populations without agriculture. So, uh, you know, it was Ira, Ira Burton Perrine who got the idea that we could, you could dam the Snake River and uh, that would provide a wonderful irrigation system uh, here on the dry high desert. Um, so, let's read about the, the, how they got, how they attracted people here. The Twin, this is on page 156. The Twin Falls Land and Water Company opened the first 60,000 acres to settle with drawings for homesteads at the Shoshone Opera House on July 1st, 1903. To purchase $25.50 per acre it had to be paid uh, $25 for the water right and $0.50 cents for the land for a maximum of 160 acres. Only $0.25 cents per acre had to be paid immediately. Settlers could prove up, demonstrate settlement, and use uh, d demonstrate settlement and use in order to obtain title to the land. When twenty acres had been cultivated within three years, settlers could work on the project to help work off the cost of their water rights. Okay, so that's how they um, attracted people here. Um, so basically, you know, it wasn't free land, but it's very cheap land. And, um, and that also, um, was, it was a form of settlement, a form of, uh, land reclamation, and it was a, uh, a form of getting property to, um, uh, to individuals so they could become, um, economically and politically independent, autonomous, and free. Until next time, long live the Republic.